Hi, your next challenge is entitled Absolute Sum. You are to take an array of integers, positive or negative or both, and return the sum of the absolute value of each element. Please look at the examples. We'll do this one. Uh, so remember, we're taking an absolute value of each element before we add it. And the absolute value we talked about um, basically gives you the magnitude of the value it'll remove a negative sign when it applies. So we'll have 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 8 is 15, plus 10 is 25, and that's how we got that. Note that if you added these numbers just as they were because of this negative 1, you would not get that value. Uh, similarly here, 3 plus 4 is 7, plus 10 is 17, plus 2 is 19, plus 3 is 22, and that's how we get there. Feel free to do the rest if that's not clear at this point. And then in their notes section, uh, yeah, that's basically what I said. They help you understand what absolute value means in case you aren't familiar with that. So let's go to this challenge. I think this is very much in your wheelhouse by now. You should be able to bang this one out. Go ahead and pause the video and do it. I'll go into my solution. I'm not going to use the loop. I'm going to use one of the um, built-in methods to solve this. And I may as well bring the code I need now. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the, the integer array. And this is an array, and I found a method called aggregate that I'm going to use. And you can think of the meaning of that word, and it kind of makes sense for what we're trying to do here. We're accumulating values, and you'll even see the term accumulate in here. But there are a few overloads. They look awful if you're new to this, but bear with me. I chose this second one that has a seed value where it, I provide um, a starting value for the sum, if you will. And then remember, we talked a little bit about extension methods. And so this keyword, this here, applies to the source. The source, in our case, is the integer array. That's the source. So on that array itself, we're going to call the aggregate method on it. And if you're wondering why I can do this, you know, they're talking about I enumerable here. Why, why can an array do that? If you do go look up the array class, you'll see that it implements an interface called I enumerable. We haven't talked about interfaces yet. We'll get there. But if, you know, there were too many disconnections there, I was hoping to try and mend some of that as we go here. So just know that an array, since it implements this interface, it is effectively an I enumerable. So it can be used that way. That's how that works. So we had our source, our array of ints. We're able to provide what they call here a seed. It's just an initial value. And then we have, we've seen this, right, when we use lambda functions. We have to, we're going to provide one of those, and they give the types. If you remember when we looked through all those, remember they had tons of these where it was just zero parameters, one parameter, two parameter. Feel free to look up func if you don't recall that. And then we saw that the last one corresponds to the type of the return, what the, the function returns. So really, if you look at it, we got two generic types here. This T accumulate and T source. And otherwise, you know, they sort of repeat here. So this is made generic because they don't have to match. In our case, it's simple, simpler than that. Um, both types will be integer. We're going to be accumulating an integer, and the collection is going to consist of integers. So you can think of it all, I guess, as one type if you want, but it's good to make this distinction keep it in mind so that you know you don't you're not confined to using only integers though we will in this case so 
With that said, I know I can use this aggregate method on um, the, the integer array because it's i enumerable. So it does that. And now, what goes in the guts of this thing, right? I mentioned that with the pages here, I really like the examples section that they provide. They give you a nice usage case where a lot of the times you may read through the the descriptions and it just doesn't quite click and um, you see it in use and hopefully that's clear so this was our source right the integer array and then this is our seed uh, this would be common for for summing or counting right you you normally start at zero and accumulate as you go but you don't have to you could start summing from 10 or counting from 31 if you wanted and you just enter that value here but definitely common would be zero and then next is that funk thing that they showed above remember accumulate the source accumulate in our case these are all integers so remember the first two are input parameters and this one's the return type so you know you're going to have a two input parameter method here right Remember, these are the input parameters, and then this is the body of your function down here. So we're going to do something like this. And we'll say 0, because I definitely want to start summing from 0. Then I'll do, go into my lambda. And for that, let's see. Well, let's use, I like the name total for the sum. Well, we're calling it sum. Let's use sum. Remember, you get to make these up sum and then I'll call val to represent the given integer coming from the collection at any time. We'll use our arrow there. And then what we want to do is basically take sum. We're going to add to it math. Remember we used math absolute value before. You've seen this before. And we're going to make sure we get the absolute value of, of this integer that we're dealing with for each um, item in the collection. You're going to get the absolute value and you're just going to add it to sum. Remember this plus equals is the same as saying sum equals sum plus this amount. We've talked about that a couple times. I'm, I'm going to assume you're good with that. So yeah, that I think pretty much does it. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Maybe you hadn't heard of this aggregate method. So yeah, you could have looped again like we've been doing. I'm trying to branch out though and put more ideas in your head about things that are available to you. Um, thought this was a good example to, to show it because everything is integers. It's kind of simplified that way, but you can start to see the power of this more when you have, when you're mixing types. So I hope that was helpful. If there are any questions, feel free to leave them below and thank you for watching.